Hi, and welcome to today's Meet the Investor. I am here with Patrick Hanlon, a current active duty as an Army officer, uh, founder of Isabel Collector, as well as founder of Ranger Investor. Uh, Patrick, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Happy to be here. Um, you have a pretty amazing story. Um, first off, thank you for your service um, as an active Army officer. We always uh, appreciate that. Um, obviously, having you know a lot of military background and executive, we always uh, get excited whenever we speak to someone who has been or currently is in the military. So thank you for that. Uh, you and I connected because as a rent-tastic user, um, you have a pretty cool, unique perspective of investing as an active military uh, army uh, captain or officer. Excuse me. How did you come about becoming an investor while you're still actively in the military? Great question. So it was unintentional. I just kind of got fed up with throwing away rent money. So the first property I purchased was in 2017 in Washington, D.C. And since then, I would basically scoop up a property every time I move. And being in the Army as an officer, we tend to move quite a bit, especially with like the career path that I've taken. So right. Every time I'd move, I would try and scoop up another property. And, you know, five years later, I basically created a full-time job for myself managing this real estate portfolio. Uh, what year did you start purchasing properties? So between 2017 and 2023, you now have about seven units you're managing. If, if I remember, we talked about that. That's pretty impressive. I mean, um, is this something that other military or army officers are, are, are able, do you think that people can replicate? Yeah, it's, um, it's actually not that uncommon um, because, you know, so most people, general populace, uh, they will only execute, you know, two or three real estate transactions in their entire life. And they also won't move that often. However, in the military, we move all the time. So you could, you could get a 26-year-old staff sergeant who has three houses and he's moved six times. So it's actually becoming more and more common in the military. It's, it's also, I think, a very accessible path to building wealth for those of us in the military. So you kind of used your consistent, you know, moving, have to consistently move to ge different geolocations because of work. You've used that as a benefit in order for you to kind of plot different properties in different areas, which again, you know, in our, in our initial conversation we talked about is very um, kind of counter- tips and tricks of what, you know, an, an investor learns when they first started, you know, location, location, learn your location and start to grow out. Whereas what you did was you did a lot of geolocation. Did you find that difficult initially? And, and kind of what, what built, gave you the comfort level to say, you know what, I'm going to go adverse from what is being taught in the, in the rule books when it comes to being a real estate investor. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it is challenging. I would not recommend to like a brand new investor to purchase uh, property in four different states and and have different categories of rentals. Absolutely not. However, I really didn't have a choice. Um, and I, I found out that it is definitely possible if you're comfortable deploying uh, software to like automate as much as you possibly can. Um, I, Fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually tried in the beginning using a property manager and I was very disappointed and I realized um, I could easily do what they did remotely mm -hmm. because, you know, you could be anywhere in the world and write an email or pick up the phone. So, so uh, what, I mean, what have you done? I mean, starting with, with having, starting with a, um, with a property manager, how do you have the time to balance both work and, you know, in being in, in, in the military? I mean, that seems like it's, a lot of time, and especially if you're bouncing back and forth and, and being in active duty, how do you find the time to do both? It's tough. I mean, I work an insane amount. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think most real estate investors do. Um, and frankly, it just, I actually have gotten to the point where, you know, I'm transitioning out of the military and I plan on doing my real estate investing, going all in 100% because I actually found I reached my point where I could no longer juggle both of those careers. They're kind of competing with each other. And I, right. I, think the, 
I think what did it was when I crossed over into short-term vacation rentals, which are much higher touch. Right, right. Well, with short-term, you're constantly having to change, you know, the, the living situation and tenants. Um, so what other softwares have you Im imply or have you uh, put into your business in order for you to kind of help manage your pr production? So um, I use the heck out of Trello uh, okay. for, for task management. Um, if you saw my Trello board, it looks insane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna to have to actually introduce you soon to uh, another product we're developing, which is AI uh, machine learning that helps manage your tasks and all that called Taskable. But we'll talk about that in, in another quarter when it's actually out and uh, product ready. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I use, I use Trello, I use Avail for managing leases and collecting mm -hmm. rent on mm -hmm. my long-term and executive. Mm -hmm. um, and then I use, I mean, I, I say Airbnb, but like that's, it's a pretty robust piece of software. And mm -hmm. I've made a deliberate decision not to use another like piece of software stacked on top of it. I know I do have some friends who use something like Guesty, but okay. I sort of doubled down on Airbnb and I actually only list my property on Airbnb because I also struggled with trying to manage multiple short-term vacation rental websites like VRBO, Airbnb, bookings.com. It was, it was too much. So I, I just doubled down on Airbnb and it's paid off. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you prefer short term? I'm just out of curiosity. Do you prefer the short term? Do you think if, when you go into this full-time, full-time, I mean, I know you're in it full-time now. Um, <laughs> it's like double full-time, but when you're just strictly working on in, as an investor, do you think you'll be working short time or do you think you're going to work towards more to the longer time term um, property investments? I think for the next phase, I'm going to focus more so on the long term. Um, I also think the sweet spot is the executive or what people will call like a medium term rental where it's furnished. Um, they generally pay a higher rent similar to what you get short term, but uh, they're about as much maintenance as the long term tenant. They're not, you know, reaching out for the Wi Fi password. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your initial strategy. Um, again, uh, I'm, I'm really interested in, in, in hearing how you leveraged, um, you know, your, your, obviously I'm, I'm assuming it was a VA loan when you first started and you bought your first purchase, you know, purchased your first property. I'm really curious to seeing how you took that and leveraged it into multiple different properties. Cause again, starting in 2017 and over the course of what, five years or so, uh, four, you know, five, six years, it's incredibly impressive that you went to seven units. I mean, most investors don't necessarily you know, purchase that many properties, let alone someone being uh, in the actively in, in the military. Kind of walk me through the strategies and how it went from one unit to two units to, to three units. Sure. So uh, the first one I really just stumbled upon. Um, I bought a, a really a, like a luxury condo in DC. I was able to afford it because of the no money down with the VA loan. Okay. Uh, and at that point in my life, you know, I, I had very little like financial obligations. So I was able to qualify for quite a bit of money. Um, I got into that and then immediately started like house hacking. I brought in a roommate. Um, and then I actually, three months after I bought it, I got orders to go down to Georgia. So I was only in that property for three months. And I, I handed it off to a property manager. And a couple moves later, I end up in North Carolina and I purchased... Um, a townhome and same deal. I moved into that. I house hacked it by getting a roommate. Um, I was in that for maybe like a year and a half. Um, I move out of that one and I moved to Georgia and I bought another townhome. And because I had, I mean, pretty good income through the military. Um, I'd been saving up money for like most of my adult life. So I was able to get favorable terms and I didn't have to put that much money down. So although I had my VA loan eligibility was used up on the first investment, I was able to put 3% down on the next two. So my cash investment to acquire these other properties was less than 10 grand. How, 
yeah, I mean, that's amazing. How, how is that? I mean, so if, if I wanted to replicate something like that, well, what steps would I have to take in order to be able to purchase three properties with, not, with less than 10000 in cash? Well, if you, the, the key thing is making sure that when you move out of a property that you get, you're able to stabilize it and you're able to get a long-term tenant in there because the conventional lenders are going to look at that. And if you have a stable renter, you can use that income to offset the obligation of owning that asset. You could basically want to be able to quickly turn those assets, um, if not income producing, at least not uh, taking like a hit to your debt to income ratio. So you don't want to necessarily, it, it can't be an expense, meaning you can't be losing on the first property in order for you to leverage the second one. Correct. The, the other thing that folks in the military have an opportunity to do, and I did this, like Every time I deployed or I went to a school or something, I saved all of that cash. So when you deploy to a combat zone, the money you earn is tax-free. So a six-month trip to Afghanistan, for example, you could save anywhere from 10, depending on your, you know, your rank, you could save 10 to 40K in cash and come back and it's tax-free. So after like a deployment, for example, come back, like when I bought the place in North Carolina, it was um, less than two years after a deployment where I'd saved up a bunch of cash. And so it was easy to get the funding I wanted uh, and then also to make that 10K down payment. Interesting. So if I'm, you know, can this strategy work with someone who's just been, been, been just started working in the military or is this someone, are you saying that, you know, you have to spend a couple of years, you have to build up the cash wealth, you know, because my th initial thoughts are, and especially because I do want to get into the conversation about the Rager Investor Foundation. Uh, I call it a foundation because it's, I know it's not a foundation, um, but in, in my mind, I mean, it is because, I mean, you're, you're giving, you know, you're helping, you're helping those in the military uh, to kind of get their, you know, start their investment, uh, start getting into the investment game without any kind of expectation in return. So that's why I call it foundation, but I, I know it's not, but, you know, Someone who's just started, can they start getting into the investment game? And do you recommend it for, you know, someone who, who's 18, 19, 20, maybe 21 who just got into the military? I absolutely do recommend it. And it absolutely can be done. Um, uh, two, two months ago during our monthly Ranger Investors call, there was a 20-year-old Ranger who got on there who just purchased a duplex. And I was like blown away. Uh, and this, this kid was you know, worried about not, uh, he, I mean, he was concerned that he may have gotten in over his head. However, as long as he leverages the network that is there to support him, he's going to do all right. And that's the cool mm -hmm. thing about Ranger Investors is you, none of us really ever feel like we're going it alone because at any time I could take a pro forma and shoot it off. And within, you know, a couple hours, I've already gotten five sets of eyes on it or for fundraising, we could send stuff out. Like, so the community really helps you pull off things that otherwise would be very difficult because I think a, a 20 year old in isolation would have a hard time pulling off an investment like that. Uh, I mean, one getting into the investment game requires a lot of experience and the best thing you could do is leverage those who have the experience uh, Two, I know how close knit um, military brothers are. So um, if someone wanted to, start this venture and say, hey, you know what? Let me just get in touch with Patrick. Let me see what can happen. What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? So all they have to do is go to rangerinvestors.com and then uh, scroll to the bottom and we have a form right there. Just enter your information. We'll capture it and then reach out to you. Awesome. Easy enough. The website still in its infancy, but it is worth <laughs> <laughs> I think the website... Um... Does definitely gives it gives the understanding of what you are going to expect um, when it comes to connecting because there's a lot of good information um, and like I said I, I'm hoping that we can um, expand on that a little bit but um, you talked and you mentioned about the fact that you're currently not working with a property manager um, what does that entail as far as what you have to do in order to manage a property, especially if you're not in that area. Because uh, with many different, let alone the fact that they're in geo, different geolocations, they're in different states, you know, um, how difficult is that? Because I mean, very rarely do you speak to an investor 
who after their second or third property, they say, I'm not working with the property manager. I'm, you know, I'm managing everything on my own. Yeah, it's difficult. Like I, I remember being in Syria and getting emails from a tenant about like a gas leak. And I'm like having to troubleshoot it from literally like the other side of the world. So it, it comes with its challenges, um, but it's all about setting the conditions. So before I even bring a tenant on, I will try and screen them and make sure that uh, whomever is being brought on knows that their landlord is in the military and that I could get called to do, a, you know, God knows what, um, provide them with the resources to solve their own problems. And also I like to pick um, military tenants because the government, especially in like my line of work, the government has already done a more extensive background check on that person than you could even pay for. Right. And when it's in, right. When it's in like a close knit community, um, there's just a certain like degree of trust there that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get away with. Right. So right. I, I really think if you screen properly, um, that will prevent a lot of issues down the road. Now I am also at the point where um, one of our, uh, employees faith i'm training her to take over a lot of the project management and property management because i'm, I'm just at the point where if i want to take it to the next level like i need to be able to step away from that right fair enough i mean it, losing her mind when i'm like responding to <laughs> batch, bachelorette parties on airbnb you know at like <laughs> <NPM>. <laughs> this has to stop <laughs> Well, there's a lot of resources out there um, that you can utilize, obviously, and uh, I'm sure you know a lot of the tech that that as a in you know as an investor, in order to scale and to go from seven, which again you you mentioned earlier that you're at that position where you've kind of it's like the next step for you. So, what does that mean, and what are you looking for, and how do you know that you're ready to take the next step when it comes to you know, investing. And, I, and I'm assuming part of it is one, you know, growing capital. The other one is, you know, as far as full time, how do you know you're ready? That's a good question. Um, I think to some degree, you're never really going to know you're ready. Like there's always going to be um, some doubt. I think that's just part of human nature. Mm -hmm. However, a big step for me uh, and like a big wicket that I passed was um, completing a deal with private capital. So getting to the point where I can confidently invest someone else's money, um, that was like the next evolution for me. It's, it's, I've, I've really come to appreciate the seriousness and like the gravity of taking someone else's hard earned money and investing it on their behalf. So did you go to friends and family or did you kind of start connecting with people and talking to people and saying, Hey, you know, I've, I've been successful with X. Now I want to times to it. Yeah. So a little of both, like I, I try to, um, keep my network aware of the projects that I'm undertaking. And there's definitely a lot of people out there who they reach out to me and they ask me questions about real estate and they want to know how they can get involved, but they just don't have the time. So at this stage, I'm like a very good fit for people who are starting to get established in their careers, maybe generating more revenue and want to diversify the portfolio. But, you know, two kids at home, they do not have the time to be managing contractors <laughs> right. or, you know, hunting down properties like, and that's where I come into play. Yeah. I mean, the time is one thing. Also the experience, again, uh, the, the more I talk to real estate investors, the more I realize the experience you gain from making the mistakes early on and learning from those to be able to leverage it is what makes the difference between a good investor and a great investor, right? You might have one or two bad deals, which I don't know if you've had. I'm sure at some point you've had some something go wrong, right? <laughs> but it's how you learn from those. <laughs> Do we have horror stories to go over? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, all investors do. I mean, it, nothing goes nothing goes according to plan, uh, and especially with the market being so unpredictable and and being a market that has we've never seen before, um, it's it's hard to kind of gauge what's going to happen next. So, um, yeah, are you 
I mean, how long until you think you're about buying your next property? Are you in that stage where you're like, no, I'm, I'm ready to, to find the next, you know, my capital and, and my backing? Or are you saying, no, if I'm finding something, I'm ready regardless and I'll, I'll make it work? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready right now. I actually just uh, started sending out some like proposal packets um, trying to, I'm trying to scoop up uh, and work on some single family homes in Savannah which is undergoing like a huge revitalization. It's a wonderful opportunity. And there are some neighborhoods that are uh, really ripe for my type to come in and fix up these, what are otherwise dilapidated properties. And, you know, there's a major housing crisis. So like, I want to be able to go in there and take these single family homes, which some of them are boarded up. I mean, I was in one the other day, I thought I was going to fall through, <laughs> like walking oh. around, like, and be able to turn that into, um, like good stable housing for people. So that's that's the next thing that I want to do. And I, where I used to be all over the place every time I move, I have decided that I would like to um, basically <laughs> build a pipeline of projects in this area. So you went from not following the rule books to you know what? After I made it successfully, I'm going to start. Which, which I mean, to 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 speak to your to you and and what you've done is only going to propel your success you know, 10x, because if you were able to make it work, um, you know, without using the best practices, imagine what it's going to be like once you start to to use those best practices. So that'll be that'll be exciting to follow your journey and see how many more properties you're adding into the Rentastic pipeline. And another thing you mentioned, which um, when you brought up is you don't only use Rentastic to manage properties. And that's not the only thing you do as far as rentals. That's right. Yeah. So I've used Rentastic for managing an RV that we were renting out and also for vehicles that we rent out on Tura. And it's been great because I can, I can have all of my revenue producing assets in one place. That's awesome. So by the way, I took um, your request and I put it in quotes because it was an offline request. And I, put, I took it to the team and I said, I just spoke to Patrick, user of Rentastic, loves it. But here's something else that he's doing with it that nobody from the team had had ever heard of. So it's a uh, you're fitting a kind of a square peg into a, a, a you know a circle hole there. But if it's working, because I mean at the end of the day, it's just like you know RVs and and and, pro and any, anything rental is just another you know asset where it's you've got your income, you've got your expenses, you're offsetting the expenses with your income and hoping that the income's higher than the expenses, right? And it allows you to track it. So. That was a very interesting uh, conversation I had with the development team when I came and said, here's something else we can start to maybe throw in, in you know, next year after we, we've perfected the art of, of um, managing the uh, rental properties. Yeah, I mean, it, it really fits. It's, and I, 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 use, I finance my vehicles too. Uh, the cool thing about auto loans is that you generally don't have to put any money down. So as long as you can bring in the revenue, like, my vehicles, which are full-time Turo, are are cash flowing. So how did how did you come to the idea of I'm going to rent out? I mean, an RV I understand, but but even rent out a, a car. I mean, that's that's an interesting di you know diversification of your your asset and portfolio. Yeah, well, it, it kind of it it goes back to my career in the military, uh, where. I'm gone all the time, either deployed or training or what have you. And so I just got creative and thought like, how can I take these assets that are just sitting there and collecting dust and generate some income off of them? And so that's the awesome thing about Turo is that it's, it's very similar to Airbnb. It lets you set um, whatever like calendar parameters that you want. Um, so I can look at my training calendar and say, okay, I'm going to be gone to Kentucky for these two weeks. Well, I'm going to take my vehicle and put it on Turo because I don't need it. And then it starts working. And then you're like, well, maybe I'll just buy one specifically for Turo. <laughs> I, I mean, that's, that's, that's uh, how businesses and you scale and you grow. If you find something that works, you find a way to scale it. And uh, if you could do it with your own property, with your own property, right? Your first property. And that, I mean, as an end of the day, as an investor, that's what, you're looking for as a first time home buyer, you're buying the property, you know, you're hoping you're sitting in it for three, four, five years and build some equity. You could take the, you know, you could take off the loan, uh, leverage that to purchase the next property plus a little bit of cash and, and obviously rent out the first one and, and scale upwards. Right. 
Um, and if you could do that and replicate that, then heck, if you could do that with properties, why not with cars? <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, how did you come across Rentastic? Um, you know what? I was, I was on YouTube actually, and I saw another investor, um, you know, there's a bunch of YouTube videos where they compare different like accounting software. Yeah. And there was a gentleman on there who was, uh, kind of introduced me to it because I had, I had used, um, I, I've always been meticulous with my finances and I started using mint.com for personal finances a long time ago. And okay. that's great for personal finances, but it's not suited for business. Um, so then I tried out QuickBooks, which is not built for real estate investors and there's a right. steep learning curve. Yeah. And so I was on YouTube and I was just like, Hey, what's an alternative to these ones? And then Rentastic popped up and I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I need for where I'm at in my, like, cause Rentastic is great because you can start using it immediately. There's not a steep learning curve, but as you expand, as I have, then I can start um, customizing it like how I want. Whereas some other tools you, you'd have to, you know, do like an eight hour class before you could even open it up and navigate it. <laughs> like, well, that's what we're hoping. We're hoping for simplicity when it comes to the platform. Actually, I, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but we're working on turning Rentastic into a, a lending soft service a platform, as well as um, the ability for you to collect payments from your tenants and send invoicing and documentation as well. So. Um, the next couple of months have been a pretty big, um, you know, in the next two quarters, so the end of this year, uh, fourth quarter, and the first quarter of next year, 2024, we've got a lot of really awesome updates coming out when it comes to lending services and account payables for uh, as a real estate investor. So um, I'll, be, I'll be coming back to you, Patrick, asking you how it's working for you, not only for your properties, but for your, uh, your car rentals at that, as well. At that point, I'm sure you'll I've um, double your portfolio um, as well as you have. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, feedback and advice for new investors. I'm looking to get into the game and I'm a little hesitant because, you know, I'm scared. I mean, it's not, it's, you know, putting up uh, someone who doesn't, can't get a VA loan necessarily or, you know, even, even with a first time home, um, you know, loan, you're still having to put up something. Uh, if I want to get into the real estate investment game, what's some advice you'd give a first time home, you know, a first time investor to, to kind of help them pull the trigger on it? Well, the first thing I would do, and I did not do this, would be find someone that you want to be. Oh, my wife is showing up, but <laughs> no worries. we don't hear in the background. Um, find someone who is like five years ahead of you and ask them what to do. Mm -hmm. I did not do this. And had I done that, I could have probably avoided some mistakes. And it's, it's one of the cool things about Ranger investors, because there are guys who are doing that. And they're, and it's like, don't be afraid to ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. There's no such thing as a stupid question when you're starting out. And there's no such thing as a stupid question when you're uh, very experienced as well. You'd be, I mean, you'd be surprised what experts will overlook. Um, the other thing too is like have a bias for action because so many people will just, you know, paralysis through analysis and they, they want their first deal to be perfect, but it prevents them from ever lifting off and getting off the ground. Like your first deal is not going to be a grand slam. In fact, the point of your first deal should not be a grand slam. The point of your first deal is to start getting hands-on experience, which cannot be, you can read every book, you know, in the library, but there is no substitute for like, you know, getting your hands under the hood. You just got to get in it. I love it. I love it. And um, it's, it's true. Most people's first deals, again, it's either their first property that they've been living in for the last couple of years, which again, they're leveraging, or if they're going straight into the investment game, um, 
you know, just pull the trigger and, and make sure. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to do some research, right? You got to make sure the rent is going to cover your mortgage. Let's be, let's be fair about that. But, but at the end of the game, you know, pulling the trigger on it, because you will know five years, six years, seven years from now that, you know, if you sit on it long enough, the value of the property will grow, right? Um, in most markets, especially in this market, um, where it's, you know, the property, the, the interest rates have gone up so much. Property prices have come down a little bit. We'll see what happens there um, when the interest rates stop going up and maybe come down, maybe go up. Who knows? Um, but uh, I think we're in a, we're in a pretty strong market um, for investors who are looking to expand and grow their portfolio. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that uh, there's opportunity in every market. And I just, you know, have a little bit of historical perspective in it. And it you know, all the doom and gloom about the interest rates and whatnot. Like if, if you're reading, you know, your CNBC headlines, like it'll drive you insane. You kind of need to like, <laughs> take a step back, like look at some historical data, like <laughs> yeah. where are we really at? And, and that's where, ask them what their interest rate was. <laughs> like, Yeah. And that's where a mentor comes into play. I mean, someone who's, who's maybe experienced this market a little bit and has some understanding of what the what it could look like two to three to five years from now um really comes into play and and, and helps out so um it's it's start that's that's the, the advice get going on it um yeah uh what's next for patrick what's what's next for you what happens uh you know after after you go into military after your active duty is is done and, and you're full time what, what are you looking to hoping for your next you know six months to one year to look like so uh, the grand master plan that my wife and I have devised, which uh, her name's Savannah, appropriate since we're in Savannah, she is also <laughs> out of the military. So we are we are both like uh, taking the full plunge into real estate. Now she's going down the real estate agent route, and I'm going down the investor route. Of course, there's you know, like crossover. a lot of parallel between it, of course, a lot of parallel. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, our plan is to, uh, really get like a foothold in the Savannah market and, um, yeah, because, you know, make our mark in the real estate scene. That's awesome. Well, at least you have someone where you're not, now, you know, you don't have to pay the, um, the commissions to, you're just going to put that back into your own pocket or, or buy your nice gift as a thank you for helping you buy the property for the investment. Um, and, uh, I'm, I'm sure as a, as a power couple, the two of you are going to rock the Savannah area, um, together. So I'm looking forward to seeing your growth, uh, you know, happen. And, and I'm also looking forward to seeing how Ranger investors grow as well. Um, it sounds like you have an awesome knit group of investors who are really looking to help each other out and, and, um, you know, and help other, in, you know, rangers who are out there looking to start their investment plans as well. Yeah. And, uh, about ranger investors, we have, um, sort of like the last meeting of the minds decided that, um, I mean, it's great keeping it with rangers, like rangers are our target audience, but we definitely want to start bringing in more expertise um like the ranger is who, who will benefit the most from this program but there are a lot of people who have like voiced their support for our group and like that want to get involved so Amazing. that's the other thing. It's like we kind of want to take it you know expand it out another level so if people are listening and they want to get involved even if they're not a ranger you're open to hearing from them and uh connecting with them that's amazing yeah, if, if anyone and anyone listening is interested in in mentoring a ranger or helping them with some part of the real estate investing process, like please reach out and you know we can fit you in where it makes sense. Yeah, and like I said, um, we're happy to offer uh, discounts to any rangers that hear this when it comes to Rentastic. If you're looking for an accounting software and and you know like Patrick said, you're looking for something to help account and manage your your portfolio. Um, you know, reach out to Patrick or reach out to me directly. I'm sure you'll come to me, but, uh, obviously we're here to help however we can, especially cause it's such a, it's such a, it's a new, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a new platform, but it is a platform that speaks to our executive team, especially our CEO, who's, uh, you know, special military. He's been in the military and special forces in the Israeli, uh, Navy. So, um, yeah, we're, we're here to help however we can, Patrick. Um, any final words for our listeners here, Patrick? 
Um, I, I would just say if, uh, if you're thinking about pulling the trigger on your first real estate investment, um, do it. Yeah, to kind of got, do some research, <laughs> do some research, but pull the trigger. I mean, it could, yeah. Uh, the, again, we, we do speak to a lot of, a lot of people who are looking to get into it. And, and that's always the biggest thing. It's when do I know it's the right time? Is it the right time? Which market should I be pulling it? Can I pull the trigger in this market? And to, uh, from Patrick advice from one mentor down to, um, other, I guess, uh, civilians right now, um, do it, pull the trigger and, uh, get started on your investment plans. Well, Patrick, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate your time. Um, it's been wonderful speaking to you and, uh, good luck in your ventures. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And uh, thank you for joining us. We'll catch you guys on the next one.